Hello. It is Work in Progress Wednesday, and I have in progress, and I should have had it in my hand when I started recording, but consummate professional. So I have in progress my accidental hat. Now, I'll show you more about this in a second, but I just want to talk to you about why it's patchwork. And I want to apologise for traffic noise. I did wait for the traffic to settle down. It's not going to do that. So we're just going to soldier on. We're going to pretend it's not happening. Anyway, my accidental hat. So, on Saturday or Sunday, doesn't matter, irrelevant, um, I was poking around on the internet and I saw a photograph of a woman who'd received a little woolen cap, like a peaked cap, not like a bobble hat, uh, for her 90th birthday. And I thought, she is adorable. I want one. I mean a hat, not a 90-year-old woman. Uh, so... I went looking for a pattern. I couldn't find the exact sort of pattern, but I was thinking I've got those woolen offcuts. So a couple of years ago, I know I keep getting to a point and then going to like a different point before I get back to the first point. Just bear with me. It's going to maybe all come together at the end. So a couple of years ago, I bought a crafter's pack from the Waverley Woolen Mills, and that is their blanket offcuts because they weave blankets. Then they cut them to size and they have all the offcuts and they sell those in kilogram packets for crafters. So I bought one of those. I made a teddy bear out of some of them. I made another teddy bear out of more of them. And I thought that would be great for a winter hat. So I bought a pattern. I downloaded it. I printed it. I went to grab my woolen offcuts. They're not where I thought I'd put them. So I've been looking. <laughs> I spent a lot of Monday looking for them. Um in any place where they could conceivably be, I don't know where I've put them. But what I did find in my adventures upside down in the fabric stash was this, which is a sample book for sort of, um, this wouldn't be dress fabric, this would be for upholstery or for couches or whatever. So it's a sample pack, sample book of corduroy. And as you can see, I have cut a lot of those out to make, oh no, my smooth transition did not work, to sew them together to make this which is this the outside of a hat I promise I'm going to show you properly in a second but first I want to talk about this because one of the problems is just let me get that back in there so I'm thinking well that's a good size for a patch but they've all got this paper backing on them to keep them flat and nice in the and so that you can flick through them in the um, sample book not a problem I thought I will soak that off because I'm clever so I did soak one off and it wasn't going to work and I don't have anywhere to put this, tuck it under my wing. So I soaked, I grabbed, cut one of them out, one of the pinks that I wasn't going to use, this pink, which I wasn't going to use, and I soaked it in hot water for about an hour. It does come off, comes off cleanly and beautifully, but it also takes off the stabilising backing, which is a bit of fabric or whatever on the back. That's what backing is. So you can see it, I've got too much hair. You can see it there, that's just the stabilizing backing in the middle there. Now, here comes my problem. I have so many. So, this is now very floppy. Whereas these, I need an assistant. These are still quite firm. And this hat needs a little bit of interfacing to keep it structured, because otherwise it'll just collapse and go flat. Now, if I can't find my bag of woolen offcuts, do I have a hope of finding my interfacing? Absolutely not. So what I did was just cut the paper off and use smaller pieces. I still have all the edge pieces. I will do something with them. Um, but for the time being, just keeping these little small bits and then using this included stabiliser as the interfacing is working. So I'm going to put this in my bag and get my hat out and we'll talk about it. It's definitely not finished, obviously. I mean, it's not, oops, it's not lined. It needs a lining in there. It also needs its brim attached to that side. It's sort of like an adapted flat cap, so that's not a very good indication of the shape. But you might be able to visualize the shape if you're into that, I don't know. So this is obviously just the patchworky bits of corduroy. Now, I did plan to just use the warm colors, but the warm colours were limited to the red and the orange and the purple if you're generous. I love purple, goes with everything. So I've just ended up using all of it. And it will fit, it's going to fit. So it's going to fit and it's going to sit about there. It's going to have a brim in brown corduroy, just plain brown. Um, and then I've got to line it. But that is how it is going. I don't know how it looks because I haven't actually seen. So I'm going to use this. When I'm editing this, I'll find out. So there will be a brim just sort of there. It is based on a flat cap, basically. So I'll put a link in the description to the pattern. It's from Elsewhere Millinery. 
uh, and she does a lot of designs inspired by vintage hats, basically. I was going to say something more about it, but there's no more to say. So I'll put a link to her Etsy shop. Um, but that is the start. I just need to line it. I need to put the brim on, which looks a little fiddly, but I think I'm going to be all right. And then I will have a hat. And then I might make this out of like just a solid piece of fabric because this is quite tricksy to sew. It's a bit lumpy with all the seaming inside. And the other thing is I very, very nearly made a silly mistake, which is not like me. I normally make magnificently huge mistakes. The pattern doesn't include the seam allowance because, as she says in the pattern, if you mark the sewing line instead of the cutting line, so you can see there the sewing line is marked in black maybe, and you can just see the remnants of the cutting line in red, uh, that she said then you can do precision sewing, which is required for this pattern, which doesn't sound like me, and it isn't. I have fudged this in a couple of places. It's working. It's fine. So what I had done is laid out all the patches of fabric to exactly cover the pattern piece on the basis that that was the cutting line. And then just before I sewed them all together, I thought, oh, wait, no, I need to, <laughs> I need to give myself a little extra extra. So um, it has worked. Everything's attached and good. Just need to get the brim on and then get it lined. So next week, hopefully, I will show you a hat. The other thing I've been doing a little tiny bit of work on and I do mean a little tiny bit of work on, like you're not really probably going to be able to spot it. So the last time I showed you this cross stitch, remember the cross stitch? The last time I showed you I had just done the 24 hours of cross stitch weekend, which was 12 hours for me, but um, that's still, you know, 12 hours more than I probably would have done. Anyway, the last time I showed you it would look like this, and now it's looking like this, and you get a gold star if you can spot the difference, because the difference is, of course, the white up in here and then some of the beige in there and then a little bit more white down there. It is so hard to get progress shots when you're using white and beige. So once I've done this petal, the progress will be more obvious because I'll be doing the background, which is obviously dark. But there is a tiny little bit of progress and a little bit of something something. I think that's that's hat fluff. The hat is very fluffy at the moment. I will have to give that a brush down before I call it finished. But that is the cross stitch as it stands, well as it's held up. It doesn't stand on its own, has no legs. Uh, so that is coming along. I've bought another pattern, cross stitch chart. Shouldn't have done that, got quite a few already. But it has a frog on it, so I don't know what you expected me to do. Now last but not least, the third thing I'm doing is something that I can't actually show you yet. So, I, Well, I can show you this because I haven't done anything on it. This is just a bit of card. This is, is that the right way up? No. The Incognito Art Show, which is an art show in Sydney, which is basically art for sale and you don't know who did it. Um, so they've done a call out for artists and I answered even though I'm not an artist, I'm a craftsist. Both of those are real words. Um, so the idea is that these little A5 pieces will go on display and they'll also go up on the website for sale. They'll be sold at $100 each with the money going to two workshops in Sydney that are working to support artists who have disabilities. So you will buy, I don't know if you will, but you could if you wanted to. You would buy your piece, you can have up to three, you can buy up to three for $100 each. And then you don't know because you're looking at the front, there's no signature. I mean, I haven't done any, I'm not calling this a minimalist art piece. I have done one, but I can't show you. That's the rules. Um, and then on the back, when you buy it, it'll have the artist's name, title of the piece, medium, signature, and how to contact the artist. So you won't know until you pick it up if you're in, at the in-person sales or when it arrives in your post box or your letterbox if you buy online. I'll put a link in the description. They are still open for artist registrations. Art needs to be returned by a certain date in June that I can't remember. Um, it'll be on the website though. And then you can also sign up if you're interested in buying some pieces when the sale goes live. You can sign up to be alerted when that happens. So it's quite interesting and it's exciting, but I can't show you what I've done until after the sales. And hopefully mine even sell. I hope that would be sad if they didn't, but they might not. I don't know. I'm not an artist. But that is what I'm working on. I've done one. I've got two more cards to do and then I have to put them in the post up to Sydney where they will go up for sale and raise some money for a good cause. And that is all I have for you this week. Uh, you take care of yourself. I hope the weather's as nice for you as it is for me. It is a stunning day. 
I mean, it's just, autumn is my happy place. It's my favorite season. Um, if I could live perpetually in autumn, um, I'm probably under some kind of pixie curse. And I probably deserved it. You take care of yourself, have a lovely rest of your week, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.